Let's move on to the seven main screens of the Herco Control. First we have the input screen. As we've mentioned before, the input screen is where we can go to gain access to everything necessary to set up, edit, and execute active programs. Uh, the buttons in which we do that are highlighted here in the pink, the top, uh, the first set of brackets. Next we have the blue highlighted keys, which these keys are primarily used by Ultimax users, people who are migrating to the WinMax control from the other con older control platforms. This gives you the ability to feel comfortable in the WinMax environment if you're uh, an existing Herco user in one of the old software platforms. Uh, the last button down there, Program Manager in the yellow highlight, that is used for file and program manipulation. This is where we're going to create new programs, open existing programs, uh, save uh, programs under different names, um, create the file tree, so on and so forth. Other information that can be gained from the input screen are things also like in the very bottom left corner of the menu bar is the active program name. Um, regardless of what screen I'm in, however, even though I'm mentioning this on the input screen, no matter what screen I'm in, that um, active program area is always present uh, regardless of screen. Next we have the program manager. There's quite a bit of information that can be ascertained from this uh, screen as well. In the large red square, we see that on the left side is the program name of all of the active programs that are open at this time. We can have up to 16 programs open at a time. They can be a combination of conversational or NC programs. And we can determine what kind of program is open by the file extension itself. Uh, you see the very top one, which is a .fnc. I can tell that that's an NC program. It's a FNC for FANUC NC. It's an industry standard type uh, program language. The second one is an HWM or a Herco WinMax Mill. That tells me that's a conversational block, excuse me, conversational program. And if you look to the right, uh, the column sort of in the center of that box, you see a couple of exclamation points. Those exclamation points indicate that the program has been changed in some manner. At least one character has been changed since that program was opened, created, or saved last. That's a visual reference that I can tell something has changed. To the right of that exclamation point we have the path or that's the location in where the program resides on the hard drive so the uh, the file path to where that program resides now you notice below that uh, the very last program in the list is a no name one whenever i create a known a new program it's going to be labeled automatically as no name whatever the next available number is and now in this case it's no name one since I've created it, there have been some blocks that were changed. I can tell that because of the exclamation point. And there's no path associated with it. So this program has never been actually saved to the hard drive anywhere other than this program manager. Also associated with every program that I write, if you see the little green box there, we can also associate a snapshot from the graphics screen that will be resident with the program itself. So as I highlight each individual program in the, in the program manager, an individual snapshot associated with that particular program could be displayed there. In the blue box, there is a text box there that we can enter some text uh, to describe the program itself or something to do with the customer or the, or the part itself. So between what I named the program by program name the path or what file I've stored it in, what the image appears to be, and then what the uh, what kind of text I can put in the description box. I can very easily prioritize my programs or organize my programs in a manner that I'm able to find them again uh, if I need to run them again in the future. Here we see an example of the program review screen. Uh, we talked about this program review screen when we were discussing the menu buttons on the on the control panel. And here's an example of what that screen looks like. In the red box, we see an outline view of each individual block that makes up the different features on our part. As I highlight each individual block, you can see in the green box to the right of that, all of the sub-blocks that may make up that individual block. 
In the case of a contour, I see the lines and arcs that would make up that contour. If this was a holes block, I would see the different processes and the locations that made up that holes block. Also in the red box, as I highlight each individual block, you can see below that in the blue box what tool is being used in that particular block. So this is a way for me to not only navigate my program, but also to find uh, tool changes and so forth depending on which tool is being used in each block. You see just above the blue box there's a little tab that says notes. If I were to select that then it brings up another um, box that I have shown here in the yellow or gold box and I could enter in some information about that particular block. That note will be attached to in this case block 31 the one that's highlighted and I can have a separate note for each one of the individual blocks. Uh, notes like uh, mill top face or mill round bore pocket or whatever I need to help me to determine which one of these blocks did a particular um, feature on the part. So that's the program review screen. We have the tool review screen. This is kind of the opposite of what the program review was. In this, or this screen, as I hit each individual tool in the top box, it will tell me which block of the program that particular tool is used in down in the bottom section of the screen. I use this screen very much like a tool setup sheet. If I open an existing program and I go to the tool review screen, it will tell me what tools I need to set up, what their number is, and what the associated description for that particular tool would be. In this case, I know I need a tool one and a tool number two, and they are center drill and a drill accordingly, as it shows here on the screen. Also notice in the very top left corner, there is a little checkbox that says show only used tools. If I were to uncheck that box, it would not only show me all of the tools used in this particular program, but would show me all the tools that have been described in the control up to this point that are resident in the library. This screen is very helpful when trying to navigate for tool changes in a program, uh, in C program for example. If I were to highlight tool one in this case, then it would show me where the tool changes happen in the program down in the bottom box. I could then go down and double click on that particular location and it would take me to that spot in the program. Moves us to the auxiliary, auxiliary screen. We talked about this earlier as well. When I depress the auxiliary button on the control panel, this window box will appear. From here I can simply reach up and touch any one of these quick keys that will take me directly to that particular page of the program to do whatever function it is that I find necessary at this time. We have the manual screens. If I were to touch the manual button on the control panel, one of the three important buttons that we discussed in an earlier section, then this is the screen I would see. Uh, the very top button there is tool management. I use that button for tool changes. My ATC map or my tool changer map will appear there so I can uh, decide what tools are in what pocket. Maybe I need to make some changes there. Uh, manipulate that map in some form or fashion. I also uh, can get to my manual function setup. Underneath this menu I have things like the manual rapid move. Um, I can set up my manual feed rate for the plus and minus buttons on the hand wheel uh, jog box. What is the spindle speed going to be when I turn on the spindle manually? Other, other manual functions like that are available to me under that manual function setup. Some of the other things I have available is the park machine button. I can use that at the end of the day. It actually sends the machine to the center of its travel and puts the machine into an e-stop condition. Automatically shuts off the uh, work light and the control will go to sleep after a certain period of time as well. Um, I can get my ATC diagnostics, CE diagnostics, things like that are under this screen. Uh, my sh machine warm-up cycle, the beginning of, the of my shift, I come in, I hit the warm-up cycle, cycle start, and for about 20 minutes it will massage the axes, it will move the axis around, start at a slow RPM on the spindle and continue consistently get faster and faster over time, therefore warming up the entire machine. So lots of things under the manual screen that I can find helpful as well in my day-to-day -day activities. We have the help screen. 
We talked about this as well. This is one of the control buttons on the control panel. When I press that, content sensitive material is going to pop up. You can see in the example here that the screen that was being viewed on the control at the time that the help button was depressed was the part setup screen. When the help button was depressed, the part setup um, portion of the manual popped up. If that were not the case, or it wasn't exactly the content that I was looking for, this uh, help file is, is searchable. You see on the left hand column there, there's a white search box. I can put in some keywords and search the entire document or database of help files to find something relative to what I'm looking for. And as each thing pops up in the right hand screen where the information is viewed, you notice there are a couple of clickable links there that would then allow me to click on that and take me even further into whatever it is that I'm trying to find out more information about with the help screen.